Liga. <risos> Hi, I'm Danny, and this is Torin, and we're converting a lifeboat into a liveaboard. Today, we're going to talk about buying Luya. Like we talked about in our last episode, we found Luya totally by luck on Craigslist. It was a Sunday night, and the ad said to phone and leave a message, which we did, barely beside ourselves with excitement. I mean, it was like the night before all the Christmases, and if you know me, you know that would be a very important night. Okay, so when we first found the boat on Craigslist, we were so excited to see it. But I was a little bit worried at first. We thought we wanted a boat that was more like 10 or 11 meters long, and this one was only eight and a half. Yeah, but it was local, so I mean, it was the, the best option for us, I think. So we decided we had to go take a look. Yeah, especially it was a really good price, and we thought there are not very many of these boats nearby, so if this is at all close to what we want, we better be taking it. Yeah, and it was, uh, getting sold by our local ferry company so we knew that the maintenance would be pretty good and uh, so we weren't worried about that we knew that they had to keep it up for safety standards so that was another big plus yeah so the next morning we got that phone call that we were hoping would arrive at 7 a.m. and I think it was like 7 15 when I woke up to my phone ringing so unfortunately we didn't record any of that you wouldn't want to see us but um, the guy from the ferries basically called and said do you have any questions I think their biggest question was, do you still have any? Yeah. So. <laughs> I mean, I think we had basically decided at that point that as long as it floated, we were going to take one of the boats. There were four there, and yeah, like we said, it was just too good an opportunity. Yeah. So, anyways, we decided to take the ferry. Um, we took the car instead of uh, walking on as we normally would, just because uh, with COVID, it was a little bit odd to think that we were going to try and get to this place that's in the middle of nowhere uh, via transit and everything else. We didn't want to you know, be on transit at that time, so uh, this is very early. Um, so we took the car and it was definitely a weird trip. Yeah, I mean BC never fully locked down, so we were allowed to go and do what we did, but we certainly didn't want to be around people and we packed a bunch of snacks and drinks so that we wouldn't need to buy food, but then I was too worried about needing to use the washroom, so I don't think we drank anything for like 12 hours. It was not really ideal, but we got over and back and it was totally fine in the end. Yeah. After a short drive from the Swasson Ferry Terminal, we arrived at the BC Ferries Refit Yard in Delta. We've seen it from the highway several times, but of course we've never been. It was pretty interesting to see where they fix all the BC Ferries boats. We arrived early for our appointment due to limited ferry options and had nearly an hour to wait. So once again, we stayed in the car, FaceTimed my mom, and generally bounced around with excitement. Once we were allowed in, we put on the required life jackets and wandered into the yard, so excited to see her. My first impression, though, was that she was small, so small. Tied up to a rickety dock, the large Northern Adventure Ferry was the only nearby boat to compare to, and at 383 feet, it's hardly surprising she dwarfed everything around her, including our future home. We clambered aboard and tried to look like we knew what we were doing while we had a look. Of course, this isn't our first boat, and as a machinist, Torn is extremely handy. But neither of us had seen a lifeboat before, and since we'd basically decided we wanted her, but had also spent a day and a few hundred dollars to go see her, we figured we'd better come up with at least a few questions. Torn did that while I sat in the bow and imagined how my tentative layout would actually work in this space. I also tried to convince myself she was big enough to live in. Given she was basically our only realistic option, we were pretty desperate for her to be okay, but I also wanted to avoid size-related buyer's remorse if at all possible. In the end, I thought she would be okay and we kept one. We did run the extremely loud engine for a couple of minutes, and while it started straight up, I was promptly reminded of one of the many reasons we're planning to go electric. It was boat shakingly loud in there. So 
after looking around the boat for about 10 minutes, I think Torn and I looked at each other and kind of had one of those two second conversations with your eyes where we decided to buy this boat and that was it. Um, we were so lucky. I know so many people who have bought boats and it's just such a big process in their surveys and sea trials and everything. And you know, if you're going to buy a boat that's actually built and expensive and not this weird, absolutely get a sea trial, do all those things. But for us, there was no point. Like, like we said, it floated and that was our only criteria. So yeah. we decided to get it and, um, Torin went to the bank and got a bank draft, which was also it weird. was weird and interesting yeah it was very early so they were coming out with this new you get texted you sort of text the picture on the wall the number that they give and then they text you when to come into the bank and you just sort of stand in a big plaza and sort of waiting your turn and then uh, they I think there was a bank that would normally fit you know 30 people there was three of us in it so it yeah, was I, definitely an odd situation. I was just sitting in the parking garage, probably texting everybody going, oh my god, I think we're buying this boat. <laughs> but we got back to the ferries and we paid for the boat and then we had to figure out how to get it home. So we're on Vancouver Island, we're about 40, 50 nautical miles yeah, from like where Luya was and normally we would have tried to bring her home ourselves, but... <laughs> yeah, well with uh, the whole situation again with COVID, um, and it's a new boat. We we knew that the engine had been maintained by BC Ferries, but uh, the steering, there was something wrong with it. Um, it was worked, but it was very stiff. So we thought, oh, well, you know, that would probably loosen up. It just hasn't moved in six months. So, you know, it'd probably be fine. And we looked at it and we thought, you know, we've got enough fuel. We've, you know, the engine runs well. It was loud, but... Uh, take our ear protection. Yeah, we take some ear protection and we could go halfway and um, there was no anchor or anything like that, but uh, we figured that we could tie up to a mooring ball. But the more we looked into it, we realized that the mooring balls were closed and the Coast Guard was asking everybody to try not to do any pleasure boating if possible. Yeah, um, we figured doing it in a boat, we didn't know. We were also worried because she was still totally orange at the time that somebody would be worried that the Northern Adventure was sinking. Um, we didn't want to be dealing with tons of calls from boaters and the Coast Guard about that. Um, and also it's up the Fraser River, which is a tidal river. It's a big commercial river and we've never gone up or down it. So we were a little bit concerned not knowing how much power this boat had, if we were going to be able to get through the tidal currents or if we were going to get pushed into you know the path of a tug which is really not what you want to yeah. make friends with a log boom um and i mean how embarrassing to need to be rescued in a lifeboat like that's my number one goal is to never need rescuing because it's just the irony i, I can't <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so yeah after a day or so of thinking that we were going to take her over ourselves we ended up deciding to get it towed and so uh, we phoned around a few places and Steveston Water Taxi was the company we went with. They're based right next to the ferries, basically. And yeah, they're just, uh, I think, a five-minute short trip from where the boat was uh, moored up at the ferries maintenance yard. So they knew exactly where, where the boat was, and they were more than willing to go pick it up and take it over and deliver it right to our slip. So. Yeah, and I think in the end, he actually was maybe going to go back the next day to buy some used things that the ferries were selling off. So... He, yeah, was happy to he was happy to have discovered have some job. extra stuff. I think he found an outboard out of the deal. Yeah. A few days later, she was on her way, and we were really lucky that one of our friends just happened to get this shot. All right, Torin has gone on ahead, but we just parked, and Lydia should be here any minute. They phoned us from about a half hour away, so... We're just getting to the marina now, and we'll be waiting for her on the visitor dock. Wait, she'll be coming from down here. And at right about 1.30pm, there she was. 
Compared to how much drama we thought getting her to Victoria would be if we'd done it ourselves, it was so worth it to see her show up with these very competent lion handlers happily pulled behind this quite speedy boat. Since we still had our sailboat, we were put into a visitor berth for a few days, and I don't even think we knew if we had lines or fenders or anything as she was pulling in. It was all a little bit of a scramble, but they made it very easy for us. Once we got her on the dock, a surprisingly smooth operation given the lack of engine or people on board, we waved off our lovely drivers, threw open the side windows, and admired our new home. After getting the uh, lifeboat to the marina, we uh, discovered that everybody is going to be asking us questions. Um, it was so funny. We've had our boat at that marina. Um, our yacht club for three years yeah and I mean it's great marina great people and everything like that but we you know we had a half dozen friends that we knew regularly and we would say hi to and whatnot but after we got the lifeboat it was crazy everybody was coming up to us and asking us what we were doing and everyone was just so curious yeah and I mean we're traveled so fast like We've gone back to the marina since we hauled out, so the boat's not even there, and people I've never met before are coming up to us saying like, oh, how's the lifeboat going? Are you still orange? Like, when are you getting to the canals? I mean, these are people we have never met, and I think they just know us because we're the younger couple, and we've got the crazy lifeboat. Yeah. But everybody's being really nice about it. <laughs> yeah, no, everybody's being great. Yeah, but yeah, if you want to make friends with everybody in your marina, I would recommend getting a lifeboat. <laughs> That night, like the first night we bought our sailboat, we decided to have a sleepover on Luya. We're here for our first night on the boat. It's 11 o'clock. Despite the cool weather, complete lack of facilities or furniture, and slight ridiculousness of it all, we piled up some board cushions from the sailboat, layered in a bunch of blankets, and had a surprisingly good night's sleep. Waking up the next morning, we started to take stock of what we had and where we needed to go first. To find out about that, tune into our next video and remember to subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more videos about turning our lifeboat into a liveaboard. Thanks for watching!